Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tessie's Mindfulness Retreat, week four. We are already in week four. Isn't that nuts? Time just flies. I said to my husband today, I was like, wow, we're already in week four. It's a month, guys. See how fast it goes. And I hope that in that last month that we have spent together, you have learned something. Um, next week is half term. So then we do a little bit of a recap next week as well. I will build that in so that we have a half an hour for feedback, things you really enjoyed, also things you would like to see more for the next five weeks of uh, closing. We will have four more sessions after next week. And the fifth one will be really just recap, things you really liked, um, some things you want to revisit maybe, and uh, getting to know each other, as I mentioned last time. I think that would be really, really nice. And so you can connect, maybe sharing each other's emails or, you know, um, each other's WhatsApps and just keep the group going, you know, sending useful things, um, useful articles. And uh, yeah, I will send you then as well uh, a letter. You will get a courier from me with some surprises maybe. And um, you will get an email or WhatsApp, depending on which group you are, um, with the same information about some of the meditations we use, some of the resources I accessed, um, some of the resources as well that I use for my PhD from the university. So I will um, take out some PDFs and videos, videos I will try if I can, but some of the material that you can also then just read in your spare time because they're really interesting. Um, so week four today, as you know from your planning that you have received, today is all about visualization visualization is really yeah it's a really beautiful thing isn't it because it's such a it's one of the main sensories we are lucky to have we only have um well we we have visualization in certain ways right we have it through view so we see uh with our eyes um which we're all blessed to have because not everyone is able to see or some people have lost their eyesight. And I think it's something to be really, really grateful. But we are, besides being extremely appreciative and grateful for that, we are diving into the visualization of our mind. So we are looking into the eye of our mind today. For that, I have a presentation for you again. But today, mostly, will be exercises. So theory will be limited. We will do around six exercises together. They're very small, but they are very nice. It's different types of visualization. And um, just to get you a bit in tune, also for you to understand what how visualization could look like or feel like, uh, sound like, um, just to get your mind tuned in um, to recognize it and how to do it when you want to do it. Before I start, I have a book here which is the Epic Mentor Guide, Oops. which I love, which is really about, you know, um, an inside advice, the workforce, and it has amazing quotes and takeaways from 180 boss women who know. That's what they say. And I really like some of the work that is inside. And I have a quote for you today that we start because it kind of like wraps up a little bit already what we have discussed over the last weeks. And it is something that is always kind of in the back of our minds. And you will know what I mean when you hear what I'm having to say now. So I will read out to you now. Obstacles and challenges are part of life. And often the only part we can control is our reaction to them. We have been talking about that extensively, as you know. First, and this can be really hard. Do not take setbacks personally. They are learning experiences if you let them be so. Always remember whatever is happening to you now has happened to someone else before. Reach out to someone you trust. People want to help and will if you ask them. In one of my groups on the vitamin W and Maria knows that, we had a sister today who wrote and she said, I'm embarrassed to ask for help. Do not be embarrassed. You know, if you need help in any way? Is it work? Is it your spiritual growing? Is it family? Is it happiness? Is it just whatever it is? Don't be embarrassed about it. Because as it says here, it's very likely that someone has been there before. 
when I read this, the first part of this quote, I thought about divorce, right? That was for me one of my biggest, I thought failures and setbacks in my life, where I thought, wow, I have failed as a wife because it didn't work out. And that's why my anxiety was so big after. And I felt so bad because I couldn't fix it no matter what I was trying, right? I didn't want it to fail and I couldn't change that. But then I remembered slowly over time and as people gave me feedback and as people asked me for advice then, that, hey, there have been so many other people there where I have been at that moment in time. And there will be so many other people that will go through that eventually in the next decades and so on. I'm not gonna be the first and I'm definitely not gonna be the last. Men and women. Anxiety thrives in isolation. If you keep it a secret, it will grow. Sometimes just telling someone you feel anxious or overwhelmed is all you need for relief. And the true gift is when that someone guides you or shares their own perspective on how they dealt with setbacks or insecurities. Finally, don't forget to pay it forward. Encourage and support the women and men, I add men, who you, are, who you see struggle to find their footing in what can be an unforgiving world. This is from Elizabeth Vargas, TV journalist and author. And she is very right because the gift of being there for someone else is also the gift you should have access to when you need it. So never feel embarrassed about it. And also I hope that this group here is some kind of like a set, a, 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 a safe haven for you that you can ask your questions at the beginning before I record always, after when I stop the recording for the Q&A or also you have all my emails and my WhatsApp. And as many already have, just contact me. I'm there for you. And, you know, we are all very, very busy, but we also choose who we make time for, right? So, um, yeah, try me. And if not me, I'm sure there's many other wonderful people out there. So sending you a big virtual hug and let's get going with week four visualization. One second. Let me just see. Okay. Okay, that's that. Oops. As you can see, I have not improved yet with technology, but I am getting there. <laughs> oh, here we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. Can you see this? Yeah? Is it just this, the week four visualization, right? You don't see all of the other slides yet, no? Yes. Perfect, thank you, Andrew. Amazing. So I thought I'd use a little bit of more colorful and dynamic background for my presentation today because it goes well with the topic we will be talking about. Note, I'm a PhD student and not a licensed coach nor a health physician. As I say always, and always keep that in the back of your mind. If you need help, medical attention, or anything else, please go and get it. Um, this is part of my PhD coursework, and I'm so grateful for all your time um, here live, but also for everyone tuning in on YouTube and for everyone else who I'm doing one-on-one -on -one sessions and follow-ups as well after they watch the YouTube. So I'm very grateful because you're all part of my coursework for that class, and I appreciate that. So, um, week four visualization. Life is a journey, not a destination. I got this quote from Headspace. As you know, Headspace is an app which I love. There's so many beautiful mindfulness meditations on there for all kinds of things, and they have an amazing section only on visualization. I will use some of their text um, because I really find the description and the theory they added is fantastic and exactly what we need. So at one point or another, everyone has recited some versions of that quote, life is a journey, not a destination in their minds. In today's always on the go society, 
that mindset can get lost along the way. Many of us get, um, many of us get tangled in webs of stress and anxiety, loss of focus, sleepless nights, as we talked last week, week three about sleep. While becoming more in tune with our bodies and minds is not an easy feat, meditation can help. And techniques such as the visualization can help us achieve the health and wellness benefits we are seeking. What is visualization? Visualization on its own involves picturing in your mind the outcome of something before it's happening, whether that's a task or opportunity at hand, such as getting on stage to speak before a large audience or a sport about to be played. Visualization gained popularity in the 1980s when the Russians began using the technique to excel in sports following the 1984 Olympics. Today, notable athletes such as Michael Phelps, which whom I met, amazing guy, did you know that he burns 7,000 calories or something extraordinary crazy a day when he is really training for the Olympics or when, while doing it? My friend Rosie Stancer, she is the daughter of the, the late Lady Mary, one of the um, cousins of Queen Victoria, uh, Queen Elizabeth of England, the oldest cousin actually, she passed away sadly. Um, but um, Rosie Stancer is a polar explorer. If you can Google her, she is insane. And um, she has done world records. And she has, believe it or not, and that's public knowledge, so I can say that, she has cut off her toe when she was um, on a solo expedition. I think it was the North Pole or the South Pole, I'm not sure now, but she fell into the water and um, obviously she was alone and uh, she got frostbite. So she needed to cut off one of her toes with a Swiss knife. Isn't that nuts? When you look at her on Google, she is the tiniest, cutest, most elegant, lovely woman you can imagine, but she's a badass. She pulls truck wheels and whatnot, like really on top of her game. But visualization there as well has helped her to keep her cool. She, uh, she told me, she said to me, Tessie, I, I, I already uh, jumped with her in ice water and all of these things for the Special Olympics to raise awareness and money for um, people with special needs. And uh, I said to her, how did you do it? Being all by yourself on the ice. And you know, if you sleep too long, if you, well, firstly, she said, you can't really sleep because you're actually shivering while you're in the tent, even though you're trying to keep warm, it is so cold that it is impossible to not shiver. So she said, you will fall asleep just because you need to, maybe two, three hours, and you cannot sleep more because otherwise the ice will pass you. So the ice is too fast that if you don't move on, you will lose the work you have done because the ice will pass you. Isn't that crazy? So she said visualization helps, helped her a lot. Um, she was just in the Taklamakan Desert in, in China and she's still, still doing crazy stuff in her 60s now. And yeah, she is an amazing woman, but visualization has helped her a lot. Visualizing her family, she has a son who's 21. So at the time when she was at the North or South Pole, her son was already born, he was a very, very young toddler. And can you imagine as a mother being away, also falling in the ice, being forced to cut your toe, what that does to you, right? To just visualize keeping going and being there. And, and, and she said it gave her so much strength and you know, um, you know, visualizing something warm as well, she said. Because as with Michael Phelps, um, burning calories, she said, you cannot eat the calories you need a day. So you're losing weight like there's no tomorrow. And even if you bite into pieces of butter, she's, because I said, why don't you bite in pieces of butter? That's pure calories, right? She said, no, because then you can get other diseases. You can illnesses such as diarrhea, and then you're really not good, right? So um, yeah, it's a bit of, a, um, a, bit of a, a circle, isn't it? But again, with the topic of today, visualization really helped her. So noted athletes, as they say on Headspace, such as Michael Phelps, also employed visualization as part of their winning strategy. For months before the race, Michael gets into a relaxed state. He mentally rehearses for two hours a day in the pool. He sees himself winning. He smells the air, tastes the water, hears the sounds, sees the clock. Phelps, Olympic swimming coach Bob Bowman said, 
in a 2016 interview with Forbes. Visualization and visualization meditation are not quite interchangeable. Rather, they intersect at times and both rely on your imagination. For example, in order to achieve success a la Phelps, you would be employing pure visualization. Your mind does the heavy lifting while allowing your body to relax and begins picturing an experience before acting on it in real life. This eases performance anxiety through familiarity. In a visualization meditation, on the other hand, the brain uses the same imaginative mechanics, but it instead focuses on an image or something or someone that is conjured as the object of focus. What is the science behind visualizations working? Well, the brain is a fan of visual stimuli. During the exercise, your amygdala, the tiny structure in the center of your brain here, um, is responsible for the fight or flight response, has trouble distinguishing between something that is simple being seen during a visualization meditation session and something that is actually happening in real life. That's why they also say, you know, when you feel bad, when you have negative, when you have a lot of negativity in your life and everything, when you, when you don't feel good, visualize yourself happy, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, even if you don't want to. Your brain will not know that that is not the truth. You know, and, 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 and there's a quote and I, I try to remember it, but it goes in the way that it says, it is you would think more only positively and only be happy with your thoughts if you knew the effect it has on your body and your new mind. Because whatever we think will translate into how your body reacts, you know, and, and how your mind will play out. So just try to think happy stuff. Be positive. Tell yourself, you know, each time I see numbers, for example, 11, 11, 12, 12, my husband and myself, we always say the same thing. We are happy, healthy, successful, loved. We always say the same thing each time. And we always in the mirror as well in the morning, you know, we have um, actually uh, two blue circles where he wrote on it what he appreciates about me and where I wrote what I appreciated about him, all kinds of things. And he has mine on his glass and I have his on mine. So every morning I get into the bathroom to wash my teeth by my sink, I see that blue bubble. I read it and I remind myself what my husband appreciates about me. Especially when I'm grumpy in the morning, which happens because I don't like waking up in the morning. I look at it and I think, hmm, I am a very lucky woman. And it's just nice because it gives you that feeling that you need to set your mind straight. So have it. Um, I worked with a psychologist here when I had a lot of anxiety because uh, of my uh, burnout years ago. And I have openly spoken about that. And I think it is important that we speak openly about these things because we all have it in some way or another. And she said, Tessie, use post-its like this one and put them everywhere on the fridge, on the mirror, in the guest bedroom, on your washing machine, wherever you are, and write yourself some notes. Write yourself some nice things about yourself. You are beautiful. You are amazing. You are successful. You got this. Whatever it is, right? Um, you will be financially independent. Whatever, it, oh no, 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 not you will be, you are. You manifest it. Don't say you will be because again, your brain does not understand something which is not happening yet. You, you manifest what you want. Even if it is not there yet, as Michael Phelps, you say it is already happening, right? So whatever it is you want, whatever it is you need in order to be happy in your life, at, even if you don't have it yet, write it down, stick it around your house, make a sticky house house, sticky note house. Then also something which a friend said, um, actually the, um, the godchild of my husband, Max, he said to me, Tessie, for your class, something I did and something I would suggest is that you take, um, you take a piece of sheet, right? A sheet of paper, uh, A4 with, with the, the squares. And every day you, you do a frame around it, right? Every day you give the square, the square at the end of the day, a different color. You choose different colors. You can have different sections as well when you want to make it bigger. 
And you would see what the color coding will be at the end of the time, right? You can do red, you feel loved, blue, um, you felt a little bit blue, so a bit near. green, you're hopeful. You had a really day where you were like, oh, there's something good in the making, right? So things like that, whatever the colors or whatever the significance for you is, works. But do that and see what's gonna happen. Then something my husband bought me as a gift. So we have monthly anniversaries, which everyone thinks it's nuts, but we have always done that. And um, for this month's anniversary, he gave me something, it's called 4K. So if you Google 4K calendar, and I had it here, but it's a little tiny paper. I had it. Yeah, I need to find it. But Google 4K, and it shows you how many weeks you are already alive. So it's like a huge thing. Well, it is, it is, yeah, it is like it's like a poster, yeah, that we hang up. And it the boxes are already black to where you are now in life, right? And then there's all of these boxes who are white, who are transparent, that you need to fill in with a black or whatever color you want for every week you pass until it goes until if you would go to a hundred years old. And that really puts it into perspective. Well, mine is now I'm going to be, you know, 37 this year and uh, my husband is going to be 50. And so, you know, looking at his versus mine, it's like, wow, he's already halfway through the poster, right? And it's just crazy. So I started now with Theodore to put little circles for his weeks in my calendar. And it really gives you a mindfulness visualization on where you are in life. Amazing stuff, also an amazing gift. If you wanna buy that for someone, these people will love it because it's just a very different gift and it really puts into perspective how many weeks you're already alive and how many weeks you have to go until you're 100, if you make it to 100, which would be amazing. And nowadays that is peanuts for a lot of people. And, but it shows you how fast weeks go. As I said, when we started this today, we are already at week four. We have already spent four weeks with each other. It's crazy, guys. And that paper fills in faster than you can ever imagine. Look at Theodore. In three weeks' time, yeah, a little bit more than three weeks, three weeks and a few days, he's going to be one, one years old already, 365 days old. Isn't that crazy? How many weeks that already is? of his small life, right? So um, yeah, get that, it's amazing. It's called 4K calendar, 4K life calendar. Um, I will try to find the link and then also send it, let me take myself a little note on my sticky note and send it to you in case you can't find it. 4K calendar, voila. So where have I been now? Exactly, so about the mind. So one type of visualization meditation is meditation for compassion. As we did last time as well, we did that two weeks ago. We did that on week two, the loving kindness meditation, where you focus on a particular person you have in mind or several people, depending on the exercise and direct kindness towards yourself and them. There already you had some of the glimpses about what visualization can be. You were visualizing that person you were visualizing the stranger, you were visualizing people you are struggling with. And all of the love you give these people, you bring back to you because you need to love yourself first. Put your mask on before anyone else is in the plane, right? That's what they say. And that also goes for visualization. Visualize that love. As I talked to you in week one, and week two with the mirror example. I don't know if you have ever done the exercise so far where you sit in front of the mirror naked and you just admire yourself and your body and your physique and just realize how incredibly lucky you are with the body you have. Yes, there's always things we don't like. Yes, there's always things we women, right? We have straight hair, we want curly hair. We have curly hair, we want, we want straight hair, you know? We want blonde hair, brown hair. We don't want blue eyes. We want brown eyes and so on, blah, blah, blah. You know, men have that too. But hey, just stop for a moment, look into the mirror 
and just admire what you have because that body has been with you since forever, has carried you everywhere, these legs that you have, um, the arms, the fingers, the mouth, the nose, the ears, the eyes, the neck, the chest, everything you have. And I think, you know, it's incredible. And we are very, very lucky because, you know, not everyone has that. Each time actually I see someone with a disability and I know they don't need pity. I know a lot of people who are disabled. I work with the Special Olympics and so on. And they always say, we don't need pity. We're happy the way we are and we are capable and we do things. And yet still, when I see people challenged in the street, for example, strangers that I don't know, last time I saw a woman, she could barely walk. And she was going for a walk in the park, right? And it looked difficult to me, but she had a huge smile. And I just looked at her and I was like, good for you, you know? And there I am here feeling pity for her. And she is just going on with her day and just having a good time with what she has, right? And I think as such, do the mirror exercise. I cannot emphasize it again, how important this is because it will really change the way you love yourself and the way you look at yourself. So please do that if you can. The benefits of visualization. This is still from the Headspace website. From professional athletes and dancers to everyday humans, research shows that visualization has impacted physical performance in a variety of circumstances. In a Loyola Marymount University study, I hope I said that right, dancers were able to improve their jumping height by looking at imagery and imagining their whole body is a spring. Another study focuses on everyday people found that while people who went to the gym increases their muscle strength by 30%, those who simply visualize their workouts increase theirs by 13.5%, nearly half as much. Ultimately, your body and mind are whole and training the mind will have strong effects on what your body can achieve. The benefits of visualization are plentiful. And wherever you are an athlete or artist trying to improve performance, an executive getting over a fear of public speaking or an everyday human trying to achieve your goal, whatever you need, whatever you want in your life, visualization is an effective tool for all walks of life and all types of goals. Improved performance. As Michael Phelps coach mentioned, visualization every aspect of a winning streak down to the nitty gritty details has helped the Olympic gold medalist win time and time again. There is even a, um, I, I read it online and I came to it after an aunt of mine actually died of cancer. And um, there's several books on that visualization. And there's a guy online, I don't know his name now, but I read his story and I, I heard about his story. He had stage four cancer. I don't know where it was. And the doctor said, no, you can't do that. You need surgery and everything. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. And yeah, he had some kind of cancer. He couldn't walk and it would really go up. I think it was in the spine or something like that. And he was already in a wheelchair and everything. And he said, no, 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 I can fix this. I can fix this with my brain. And he said, his testimony said it was really difficult at the beginning for months because he would always fall back. He would always get distracted. He would never get the connection between the legs and the brain at the beginning. He would always snap out, get distracted here and there. But he said the practice of doing it after months and months, it takes time, guys. Okay. Rome was not built in a day. But after months and months and months of time, he finally got into that stage where he actually could visualize himself fixing his problems, his back and taking away the cancer. And at the end of it, he could walk again. No one understood what's happening, but he healed himself with his mind. And I think that's nuts. There's many case studies like that online. Google it, it's insane. And there's also books about it on cancer because cancer, they say, there is a reason why you have cancer. And the woman, the book that I read, um, and I did, the name is passing me now, but I will try to find it. It was years ago when I read that. Um, she, visited, she had like a huge ball size of a cancer, also stage four. And they said, we need surgery. And she said, no, I don't want surgery. 
there's a problem and I'm holding back to something. And that's why this cancer came. It was in the uterus. And she said, and I need to figure out what it is. I need to dig deep. I need to feel what's happening there and why this has grown and why my body cannot let go of it. And she healed herself with that too, with visualization and meditation. It's crazy. It takes a lot of effort and it is not easy, but they did. And there's so many studies online and there's so many examples. Just check it out. It's increased. It's crazy. So it increases focus. Visualization specific details associated with the bigger picture in your mind require you to work out those brain muscles and focus. Decreases levels of stress and anxiety, no matter your profession. Playing all outcomes of a big event in your head before it's happening in real life will happen, will help the feeling, will, will help the event feel more familiar and decrease the levels of stress and anxiety associated with it. Insomnia release. We talked about that last week in week three, which you find on YouTube if you haven't watched it yet, or if you want to revisit it again, or for some people who are new, um, about sleep. Imagining yourself in a state of deep relaxation and losing yourself in the texture, sound, and smell of, set, of a set place will help you get into that deep state of mind in real life. Boosted immunity. Your mind and immune system are connected. By visualizing and keeping yourself in top shape through nutrition, sleep, and decreased levels of stress, your immune system will become stronger. That goes with what I just said before. You can heal yourself of everything, or you can at least try. There have been people where it worked out. So if it doesn't work for you, I'm sorry, but there's no harm in trying, whatever it is. Alleviated migraines and chronic pain, visualization can help transform the brain and form new networks a process called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity, Google it. Practicing the technique can form new connections within the brain that help alleviate migraines and chronic pain. This decreased depression. Picture yourself past the hurdles of depression at the point where you feel happy and healthy. Seeing your strength reflecting within your visualization gives you a picture to go back to when the going gets rough boosts confidence. Picture yourself achieving the goals you want to achieve, makes them become more tangible. And in turn, you start believing in your ability to get there. Try a visualization meditation. As we said before, if you're looking to try one, a loving kindness exercise may be a great place to start, as we have done in week two. Find yourself in a comfortable seated position and close your eyes. As I said, think of someone whom you harbor positive feelings. You know, visualize that person's face, what you think of that person. Just send love. And, you know, um, week two, you can see and hear again the visualization we did for the loving kindness exercise because that was quite a big one. After you have completed this exercise with someone you feel positively about, you can try the same practice Again, as with a stranger, someone that is really, well, also someone that is a challenge for you in your life. Everyone has that one person. And, you know, sending love to that one person is very healing. But at the same time, it makes them human. It makes you understand that they are not perfect. And yes, they might be a pain in the neck. Maybe they're horrible people. They have, hor have done horrible things to you, whatever it is. But it makes them human. And it makes you um, work with the emotions that are stuck and attached towards these people and helps you to create back that love for yourself. Because they say when you judge someone else or when you're angry at someone else or when you, when you, when you gossip about someone else, it's kind of like you put a mirror in front of your face. It's something you are struggling with yourself. And yes, I myself also don't want to hear that. When I'm angry at other people or when I, when I snatch on my husband, yes, that happens. You know, we're happily married, but sometimes you do snatch at people who are closest to you, right? Just because that's life, right? And often I need to, I need to reflect back then and, and understand that actually the core of why I got so angry is something that it's a problem that I have. It's something where I feel not confident it's something that I'm struggling with for my past or something I might got jealous 
you, you never know whatever the feelings is and i know that you can all relate in some way or another with your own experiences try it out um the five benefits according to psychology where is that here Hmm. I thought I had it here, but you would see it here as well on, on the, on the um, screen. It's by psychology.com, amazing website. And they have so many free um, things as gadgets and, and meditations you can just download and programs uh, about positive psychology, which I think is amazing. And, you know, maybe you don't know yet, but if you want to kind of learn more about the things that I'm showing you and also other things that you're really passionate about and you think oh, it's everything is so expensive and working with amazing universities is just not available to me because I don't have the funds or I, I don't have the, the proximity to these institutions or whatever it is, go on Coursera.com. Coursera.com has amazing classes, amazing. Harvard, Cambridge, LSE, Tom Hop oh, Thomas Hop uh, Hopkins University, um, Boston, you name it. They're all there. You can have a subscription, which is 25 uh, pounds a month, and you can have as many classes as you want, or you pay per class and you pay for a certificate that you have achieved that um, class. And they have also specialization courses, which is like five courses. Each course is four weeks long and um, where you can specialize on all kinds of things. And there they have some really great stuff on positive psychology, mindfulness, um, anxiety and stress. But they have also great stuff on languages, you know, other things you want to do, economics, Bitcoin, blockchain, leadership, women, studies, policy, politics, art, children, nutrition, health, you name it, it's the fashion, you know, it's really all there. But for the class today, everything I'm talking about and much, much more is also on there. And there is some really great stuff. I have done courses there. I did quite some extended courses on pandemic and epidemics because I love uh, learning about um, microbiomes. I learned to, to love about, about the science um, of, of uh, viruses and germs. And things like that. So I did quite a lot of that because I was doing my um, thesis on biological terrorism at the time. And I did some courses there and it was really fantastic. I did a project management uh, specialization expertise course there, which was amazing. Uh, and so on. Check it out, Coursera.com. So it, help, it helps to maintain alertness, uh, cultivate psychological stability and well being, enhances creativity strengthens focus and goal achievement, as we already mentioned. And most importantly as well, because it always starts at home, improves self-image. It improves what you think of yourself, right? And it all starts at home, guys. And your home is what you have right here, all of this, inside and outside. This is your home. Wherever you are in the world, this is your home, right? As long as you're happy and and feel landed and balanced with yourself this is what you want everything else is a plus and you can build on that but the foundation of a solid happy balanced and joyful life is you with yourself um we are slowly going down to practice time because i said to you we have a lot of practices to do today and um we will start with, so this is from healthline.com. They have amazing, amazing stuff there as well. Check it out. Um, very grateful that, you know, these resources are all available. And everything I'm saying is also part of the coursework I have done with Quantum University. Um, it's obviously much more in detail, but um, the overall holistic approach is what I'm teaching you here right now, that what we're exploring together, let's put it like that. It might, sound, it might sound counterintuitive to combine visualization and meditation, some people would argue, right? After all, meditation is all about letting thoughts come and go rather than consciously directing them towards a particular result. 
interested in adding visualization to your meditation or mindfulness practice? Yes, we do. That's why we're here. So we have five techniques now that we will start doing today. They're very small, but hey, we need to start somewhere. And I want you to get kind of like a feeling for it. So if you want, you can uh, take your screen off or you can just sit there and listen and just visualize. Close your eyes and just visualize what I have to say. And um, after the five examples that we're doing, I will um, ask you some questions about it, what you liked about it. Don't worry, I'm not going to put you on the spot. But it's just about, you know, what, which one did you like best and stuff like that. So be ready for that. I have chosen some healing sounds music from um, Spotify to accompany us. Because as I said already last week, I'm slowly going to introduce some, um, some sounds now. Because I think it is important to also deal with sounds while it's happening around you, right? Because wherever you meditate, we're not in a monastery and there will always be outside noises. So you need to get in use of kind of like controlling your brain and disciplining it as well while meditating um, to, yeah, to get to where you wanna be. So. So how to do it? We start with color breathing. That's exercise number one. This visualization technique can help with stress release and general mood improvement. To start, think of something you want to bring into yourself. This could be a specific emotion or just positive vibes. Now assign this feeling a color. Which color would it be? There's no right or wrong answer here, but consider choosing a color you like or find soothing. Once you have your desired emotion and corresponding color in mind, follow the steps that I'm gonna tell you now. Get comfortable, just as you would for ordinary meditation as we have been practicing over the last four weeks. Close your eyes, relax by breathing slowly and deeply. As I showed you already in week one, breathe in to the count of four and breathe out to the count of six. You can always breathe out with a sigh, with a sound. The vibration also helps you to release some of the blockages in your different chakras. Visualize the color you've chosen. Continue breathing while holding that color in your thoughts thinking about what it represents for you. With each inhale, imagine the desired color slowly washing over your body from head to toe. As I mentioned to you, like you're taking a shower in the morning, right? It's just showering you from top to bottom. Continue breathing as you visualize the color filling your entire body, including your fingertips and your cute toes. Imagine any unwanted emotions draining out of your body with each exhale and replace them with your chosen color with each inhale. And breathe in and let it out. <sighs> Continue. 
continue the visualization as long as you like. You can do this as many times as you want. Can be a minute or two or 10 or 20. You can use color breathing as part of any meditation, but you can also take a few moments for color breathing, even when you don't have time for full meditation. We will go to exercise number two, compassion meditation. I already talked about that before, but I think it's one of the most important meditation you will need to do. That's why I chose to do it again, smaller format, not as long as the last one, but we're still gonna do it. The loving kindness meditation. This visualization exercise can help you foster feelings and compassion and kindness towards yourself and others. Begin by finding a comfortable relaxing position again and close your eyes. Focus on your breath for several seconds. Inhaling and exhaling slowly until you find a comfortable natural rhythm. Visualize the person you want to extend compassion to. Yourself, a loved one, a not so loved one, or even a pet. Picture them clearly and hold the image in your thoughts. Think of how you feel about this person. These feelings might not vary from deep love to animosity. You know, as I said before, there's all kinds of emotion attached to all kinds of people in your lives. But also you might feel just simply neutral or have a specific, no specific feeling to them at all. Can be your bus driver that you see every day, the butcher, the baker that gives you a croissant and coffee every morning. Imagine challenges or pain they might be facing in their life. It's okay if you have or if you don't have concrete knowledge of these difficulties. Everyone experiences troubles, whether they share them with you, whether they share them with others or not at all. Now focus on the feeling you like to send to them. Peace, calm, joy, healing, and happiness. Picture these feelings in the form of golden light that spreads from your heart to theirs. It's like a bomb. It's really, it's a very powerful feeling. Feel it in your heart. I also sometimes feel it on my solar plexus. I get a tingling, which is kind of like when you, when you go down where your ribs part, there's that little triangle. That's where the solar plexus is. You might find it helpful to verbalize these feelings in the form of a mantra, such as may I or you find peace and happiness. May I, you, Find wellness and freedom from pain. Keep breathing as you repeat this mantra. So the breathing in any kind of meditation is so important because when you breathe, energy is flowing. And that's why when you're, when you're anxious, you're stuck because you don't breathe, you don't notice it. And so the energy in your body is stuck. Always keep breathing. If you're directing the visualization towards yourself, imagine pain and any other difficult feelings easing with each exhale as the golden light travels through your own body. Again, this exercise, you can do it just for a few minutes a day or you can do it longer, whatever you want. You will, I hope, 
maybe not always at the beginning, but as you practice it more, feel warmth, compassion, light heartness spread through your body. Let's go to number three. Progressive muscle relaxation. This visualization exercise can help ease stiff or tight muscles, which you might experience with anxiety and stress. Relaxing your muscles can relieve physical and emotional tensions, improving your mood and helping you get better sleep. As we talked in week three about sleep, this is really important. So for this one, if you want, if you're sitting, that's fine. But if you can, you can also lie on your back on the comfortable but firm surface. So if you're on a chair and if you can, try to stand up, lay down on the floor or on the couch or on the sofa. It's not a long one, but it's just nice, isn't it? A floor with a carpet or yoga mat works as well. Whatever you want, but you can also sit in a chair, no problem. With eyes closed again, take a few seconds to relax and focus on your breathing. Start by tensing. And this one as well, when I saw a psychologist in Luxembourg at the beginning of my panic attacks, he made me lie on the floor with the legs and my feet firmly pushing against the wall. And he said, as I will tell you now, start by tensing strongly all the muscles in your body, like, and then release it. Relaxing a group of muscles that aren't currently troubling you. That helps you better recognizing when your muscles tense and when they relax. But it also helps you to feel when you are relaxed. So tense your muscles really, really strongly just for a few seconds. You know, keep it a bit and then release it really with a sigh out. Do that exercise a few times. Actually, do it also in the evenings before you go to bed. It's amazing. It really helps you to just recognize and for your brain to see when and how you can relax with your whole body. Next, begin working your way through your body's muscle groups. You can start anywhere, but it can help to pick a place where the progression feels natural, such as from your head to your toes or vice versa, whatever works for you. So you start with your toes, a few minutes breathing and you start to relax it. Then you go up to your knees, to your hips, stomach, chest, arms, shoulders, really important, neck, mouth, jawline, really important. I always have that quite tense to the crown of your head. As you exhale, relax those muscle groups all at once. Visualize the tightness and tension leaving your body with your breath. Rest for 10 seconds between each muscle group, but continue slow, steady breathing as you rest. Proceed to the next muscle group, and repeat. Progressive muscle relaxation can help you increase your awareness of physical pain and stiffness in your body. If you notice a tense area, you can briefly use this technique as well during the day, during your lunch break or any break between meetings. Use the technique to visualize the muscles relaxing and the tension leaving your body. As this tension eases, so might any associated feelings of stress. This concludes this exercise, but there's more. So I have as well, you know, with my shoulders, I always pull them up like that. I actually find myself sometimes just sitting like this or, you know, eating or, you know, somehow my, my shoulders are always up and I need to really consciously pull them down and I'm getting better at it. But it is something that you need to do that comes from... Um, from our ancestors a long time ago when they were stressed and you know trying to save their lives from all of these predators and all kinds of uh, threats 
this would protect your neck, wouldn't it? Well, we don't need that anymore, but we're still doing it, especially when we're in high tense of stress, high moments of stress. So when you realize it, just check in in your body. Sometimes you can even put a time on your phone that every two hours you get a little um, hello on your phone to just check in with your shoulders, to consciously realize, ah, I am stressed again, they're up again. Let me put them down. Do that, do these repetitions. Now we come to the next exercise. It's for magnetic memory meditation. I found online, it's called the clock. Next time you're laying, which you are still probably, or if you're sitting, that doesn't matter. Imagine a giant clock on the wall directly in front of you. Can you imagine that? Give it a color as we did before with the color meditation. Name what it is made from and hear the sounds of a ticking away. Really go for its dimensions, its height, with the diameter of the clock's face. Think deeply into it, imagining all the gears and the intricacies, oh, intricacies, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, as they wind through time. Then give the clock face numbers. Are they written? Are they stamped in? Are they digital? Make the even numbers, for example, Arab Arabic numerals and the odd numbers, Roman numerals. Challenge your brain in your visualization. Or if you know other languages such as Chinese, Use it handsy for the numbers, mixing it up with other kinds of numerals. You can also rotate between Arabic and Roman numerals, synchronizing the change as the imagery TikTok takes place. It's actually quite fun exercise. This is a great training for your visualization. I'm sure a lot of you are probably like, oh my God, what is she asking for me? This is difficult. It is but it's just a sneak peek of things you can visualize and practice in your spare time. It's good for your auditory, visual and spatial sense. And this is really just the beginning, right? There's another one and the last one of these exercises that I will make you go through for today. It's called the globe exercise. This one is also by magnetic memory meditation. How well do you know your geography? I sometimes are struggling, to be honest. I'm good at it, but I'm not perfect at it. Don't worry about it though. This is an exercise based on what you know, okay? To start, you can sit again, you can lay down, whatever you feel great and comfortable about. Close your eyes and breathe slowly and deeply. To start imagining a giant spinning blue ball. Can you imagine that? Spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. Next, as you imagine it spinning, try to slow it down. I can already see it in my mind even narrating this to you, I can, I can visualize it. It's quite soothing actually. And then if you can, make it completely still. Hold the ball in front of you or wherever you have visualized it. Zoom in to the ball. Travel all the way down until you touch the blue. What is that blue? Is it water? The choice is yours. But let's imagine for the visualization technique that it is water. Next, pick the color of your house. Which color do you like? 
your house to be. I love Moroccan colors, like these beautiful browns, these orange red browns, it's my favorite colors for houses. And I have quite a few walls in my house who are like that. I think it's gorgeous. Imagine your hand building up your home on the water. You might want to spread some in imaginary dirt underneath first, right? So just work with your hands. The cameras are off, I can't see you. No one can see you. Just imagining you doing it, right? You're building your home. As you build your home through visualization, pay attention to all the multi-sensory details. I'm talking about the feeling of the stair rails in your hand, the smell in the kitchen, the temperature on a cool morning, if you're on the terrace, in your living room, the windows open. Spend a minute just on the home construction. When you do that after our class, if you do it again, do it for two to five minutes. Take really your time if you want. We don't have that now, but try to take time when you do it by yourself. Next, lay out your street. You know, what kind of street is it? Is it paved? Is it concrete? Is it soil? Is it grass? What is the street leading to your house? Try to add as many of the houses and buildings as you can. Who are your neighbors? Holding each one in mind as you lay it out on the blue globe. That is important. Don't forget the things you do. Don't put them if you forget about them. So if you can only have two houses, then only have two houses with as much detail as you want. There's no need to imagine 10 houses and then you forgot about some where they are located. Really try to picture everything in detail. It's not about the quantity, it's about the quality of your imagination. When you're ready, zoom out. Allow the buildings you've built to get smaller and smaller and smaller until they're just a speck. Now comes the catch for this one. Anytime you like, you visit your neighborhood that you are building on the globe. I suggest you keep returning to it until you're mentally constructed as much as you, of a city as you're familiar with now. And for the future, Every time you're out, pay close attention to how things look in the world. Try to remember as much as you can. Then the next time you practice this visualization, add more details to the imaginary version. This concludes our exercises of visualization. I hope you liked it and I hope you found your favorite for now. I really like the globe exercise. I really do. And I really could imagine, oh, so many things. It's so beautiful. And it goes kind of with the exercise I gave you on week two and three um, about visualizing your every day, right? And remembering by memory who is nice to you. What did you eat? And all of these other things. As you will see as we progress over the weeks, Everything I give you and everything I tell you is connected to each other and creates a whole holistic view on mindfulness and meditation, I hope. At least it does in my brain. So if you want to share, maybe one or two people, which one they like best, uh, just unmute yourself and um, tell me. I really enjoyed the color breathing one. Very nice. Why? Which color did you choose? And what emotion was it? I chose green. Oh. Green and calm. Oh, that is lovely. Could you feel the shower of the color coming down from your head to your toes? Did it Absolutely, feel warm? Absolutely, yes. Um, I kind of felt cold, actually. Refreshing. Yeah. Very nice. I can feel that. 
I can visualize that. Very nice. Thank you, Andrew, for sharing. Anyone else? Hi, I really enjoyed that spinning ball that you had to stop and come closer and bring it around. Like, that was really cool. It was very powerful and I could literally feel it spinning and so on. So that was really nice. And also the color as well. And I chose purple for uh, power and creativity and, you know, <laughs> to keep going. And I definitely, I felt the warmth actually inside. So that was uh, like the fire coming. So that was really nice. So enjoyed it. Very nice. Oh, I love purple. You know, that is one of the favorite colors of my husband. Green is my favorite color among, yeah, green and, and the brown reddish. I love Bordeaux as well, but my husband loves purple. So um, yeah, very nice. I could really feel that as well. And with the spinning as well, right? To imagine how you're building your home, what would it look like and feel like and the materials, you know? When you look into your where you're sitting now or laying down your environment around you, it makes you look at it differently, doesn't it? When you really feel the energy in each and everything of what you have around all of the stuff, right? Everything has energy, right? And um, yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Alexandra. Anyone else? You don't need to if you don't want to. We can continue because we have one last exercise and then we're already done for today. Time flies, guys, I tell you. It's so beautiful and I love spending my time with you. So the exercise I have for you, which I have sent you by email as well, and which you have also received on WhatsApp, yeah, right? Yes. Um, for the ones that uh, don't have it printed, don't worry about it as usual. Here again, this is what it looks like. For the ones on YouTube, just draw some clouds. If you don't have the paper, just draw some clouds for the ones joining. And um, do let your feelings come and go. A goal of mindfulness involves being in the present, even doing daily hassles and letting go of judgments, fears, regrets, and expectations. The problem is that all people experience both positive and negative emotions. The secret is to embrace your emotions, then allow them to pass like clouds in the sky. You can't control clouds, but you can let them pass. The same is true about your emotions. That's why I thought this exercise goes really well with the visualization. In each of the clouds you see on your paper, describe a daily hassle and the positive or negative emotions associated with it. Then imagine that it is simply flying away. It floats, it passes, you see it, you know it's there and just imagining it. Really close your eyes or just look at your cloud and what you wrote in it. Or if you do another paper, whatever it is, just look at the reality and then say, I see you, I feel you, I acknowledge you, and I let you go. This will reduce your levels of worry, stress, and anxiety. They do an example of the school bus is late in the morning and coming to pick you up if you're in school. You can do that at work as well, right? You, you are late for a meeting. It's a very important meeting. It's maybe a job offer meeting, or it's a meeting for a very key client. A lot of money is on stake and you were the one responsible for it, right? That can also be a visualization for that. Imagine being late because something didn't work out. Your emotions might be anger, frustration, impatience, whatever it is, feel it, write it down and let it go because you cannot control it. It's, it's already happening, right? You will be late and the emotion is there. Yes, you can be angry, and bitter and in a bad mood for everyone when you arrive and all of that, but it will not change what is happening and it will not make it any better if you, if you feel like that, right? So look at it, acknowledge it and let it go. Something great, right? Baby is waking up in the morning for me. It's my greatest moment. I hear him gooing in his bed and he's ready. And as soon as I open the door, he does <laughs> Like he, he loves that sound. I don't know why he does that, but uh, he loves that sound because he knows it's me. And that's amazing, right? That's one of my clouds too. I feel uplifted. And yes, 
It makes it go away that I feel tired and I'd rather be in bed too. But I have this little human being who is so happy to see me. And, you know, that is what, that is what the happiness is made for, right? What makes you happy? Write these examples down as well. And again, as I said at the beginning, these can be your clouds, guys. Sticky notes, they can be your clouds. But write positive clouds, beautiful emotions, and stick them around your house. Make sure you have all of these beautiful clouds remembering, yes, it's situations you can't change, but they make you feel good. Remind yourself of that sometimes. Like a friend called you, you got a message or WhatsApp from someone you were missing so dearly. Someone sent you an Amazon gift out of the blue. You didn't expect that. Uh, I have had that several times and I was just like, this is so nice. I feel so loved. You know, I, I, I really have been very lucky with my friends because they always are just so generous in their imagination and making things happen for me in such a detailed and beautiful way. Imagining that for you, who is that person for you, right? Write it down, make it a positive cloud. And count your clouds. For next week, try to keep count of your clouds. You cannot change your clouds. Positive and negative emotions will come and go no matter what you do. But acknowledge them and let them go. Foster the positive ones and accept the negative ones and let them go, right? So try to collect your clouds, try to collect your post-its, try to take notes. And if you want, you can share it with me as well. You can take a picture and send it to me. You can talk to me about it privately or whatever you want. I'm there for you. And I think it's a really nice way of fostering gratitude as well. Visualization, gratitude and acceptance. So this kind of concludes our week. It's already an hour and a half again. I will turn off the recording now for the Q&A. But before that, I will talk about um, week five. And then, um, yeah, if you have no questions, I wish you a beautiful rest of the week. Um, on Monday is Swiss National Day. So we have a big barbecue here. And we're going to do um, as well uh, Luxembourgish National Day at the same time because the kids are here. They were not with me for National Day this year. No, I was in school and Gabba was for the first time uh, actually performing in Luxembourg. His first National Day um, with his grandparents and his dad. So I was very proud of him because there's a lot of people and all eyes on him and the family. And he did amazing. Um, so yeah, we're doing that now. And we're celebrating, of course, my wedding anniversary and Theodore's upcoming first birthday. So a lot to celebrate. Um, and I'm really excited about it. So I hope you have some amazing plans as well for this weekend. Write me, share them with me if you want. Um, it's always nice to share positive things. So um, next week, then we talk about anxiety and stress. These are definitely important topics and i chose it to be in the half break so the, the half mark of my course because it kind of like helps us where well, we talked about mindfulness foundations week one loving kindness week two sleep week three visualization today and now anxiety and stress it gives you a really good fundamental base of what's happening what the abilities could be for you and what works well for you after that, we have week six, which goes into breathing and more of the te technical things. So we really will do some Wim Hof stuff and everything. And I will also uh, send you some stuff uh, to prepare yourself because some people can feel dizzy with the breathing meditations and that is normal. So you need to make sure that you're sitting somewhere safe, that if you would kind of lose conscious, which normally doesn't happen, but you never know that you don't hit your head and stuff like that. But we will talk about that when... When, it, when the time is there. But yeah, anxiety and stress next week. We are halfway through almost. This is amazing and I appreciate it. And I hope you like it. Please share as well with your friends if you want. The more the merrier. Um, and yeah, that is for week five. I will turn off the recording now. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And then we have the Q&A, which I don't record as always. So um, yeah, to everyone tuning in on YouTube, thank you so much. And if you have any other questions, do get in touch. Um, Tessie at butterflies.group. And um, yeah, for you guys, you know how to find me.
And um, so yeah, goodbye on the recording and don't go yet guys. We still do the Q&A and say goodbye, private goodbyes.